I was intrigued to find on the internet today a photograph of Raymond Viles excavations in the city of David. This was these excavations were in 1913. You can get a sense, you sense, by the way, already that you are, we are just below the city of David. You can see the Jerusalem wall up on the left. Or we're in this little valley that is below Jerusalem, where the first city was. And Raymond Vile discovered in these excavations a, a tablet with an inscription in Greek. Interesting, by the way, that Greek is the language used for the inscription. It's clearly coming from the the early years of the current era so the romans are ruling palestine at that point but the inscription is in greek it's very clearly legible to those who know greek and i just brought a translation for it uh, a translation of it below for you um theodotus was the son of vatenus who's priest, and he's head of the synagogue. The Greek word is archisynagogos. He's head of the synagogue. You could say Rosh Beit Knesset. And he's son of the head of the synagogue and a grandson of the head of the synagogue. And he built this synagogue for reading the Torah and for teaching the commandments, as well as the guest room, the chambers, the water fittings, as an inn for those in need from abroad. The synagogue which his fathers founded. So we know that there was a synagogue in the city of David, right next to the Beit Mikdash, and there was someone there called the head of the synagogue, Rosh HaKnesset, or Rosh Beit HaKnesset. And we're going to come to this in the Mishnah. We're, we are, we're at the beginning of the seventh chapter of Yoma. And the, um, the, the goat has been sent away, and the some of the sacrifices have been taken out to be burnt. And now the high priest is going to read from the Sefer Torah. Ba'lo chohen gadol likrot. The high priest comes to read. Interesting, we learned already, by the way, that the high priest may not have been an educated person, but it sounds as though at this point he knows how to read or maybe he's been taught how to read. Imrat Salikrot, Bavigde Boots, Kore. If he wants to read in the linen garments, these are the special linen garments that the white linen that he's been performing the service in so far. If he wants to wear those, he can. For Imlo, Kore, Beats, Talit, Lavan, Mishlo. He reads in his own white cloak. And this shows us, according to the Rambam, that this part, this is not part of the temple service. It's very interesting. There's no reference in the Psukim in Vayikra to reading the Sefer Torah at this on this day. Absolutely no reference. The only reference we hear to reading the Sefer Torah is in Tevarim. It's in, it's the mitzvah, mitzvah of um, Hakel. So the king reads the Sefer Torah, but there's no reference in Torah to the Kohen Gadol reading the Sefer Torah. And yet here he is reading it in the middle of the service of Yom Kippur. So here we, we it's all, almost as if we can see the synagogue and the temple meeting. And we read, Chazan HaKnesset Notel Sefer Torah. The synagogue Chazan would take a Sefer Torah, take a Torah scroll. May not know the Rosh HaKnesset. And he'd give it to the head of the synagogue. That's the person we've read about in the inscription. Archi Synagogus. He'd give it to the head of the synagogue. And the head of the synagogue will give it to the deputy high priest. And the deputy high priest will give it to the high priest. So there's a, a sort of, there's a kavod, there's an honor given both to the Sefer Torah and to the high priest in the sense that the Sefer is passed through this chain from the Chazan of the synagogue through to the Kohen Gadol. And then, and the high priest would stand and receive it and so well uh, he would receive it and he'd read standing up interesting that he's going to stand to read there's a um um uh, a mishnah in um in megillah um 
uh, Hakoret Amigila, Omer Yoshev. Someone who's reading the Megillah can stand or sit. And the Gemara immediately comments, Masha Ein Ken Batura. That's not the case for, to, for the Torah. In the, in the Gemara, in Megillah, we already recognize that it's not, one's not permitted to read from the Torah except standing. There's a certain respect due to reading the Torah. And that's what the Kohen Gadol, even though he's Kohen Gadol, he stands out of respect for the Torah. And he reads the portion of Achare Bot. That's the portion actually that we read today in our Torah reading on, um, on Yom Kippur. And he reads the Ach Be'asor. That's the description of Yom Kippur in the Parsha of Emor, which actually we don't read today. And then he rolls up the Sefer Torah and he puts it in his bosom. He kind of tucks it away. He holds it to his right, his, his chest. And he says, There's more than what I've read out that is written here. And then he carries on reading. So he's saying, look, there's more than what I've read out. I'm rolling up the Sefer. And now I'm going to read to you something off by heart. He's going to read the, um, he's going to read from Be'asor, from on the 10th. This is a reference to on the 10th day. And that's um, from the Pasha of Pinchas in the book of Numbers. So the book of Numbers, or what we call, well, we call it Chumash Bamidbar, but it's called Chumash Kudim, the book of the, well, the book of Numbers, really, the book of the counting. He's going to read from there off by heart. Why is he reading off by heart? Well, the Gemara explains that if you put away one Sefer Torah and then you pick up another one, people might think that the first one is not kosher. So we we don't want to do that. We're certainly not going to do that in the bait in 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 the um, in the bait mikdash. On the other hand, if we roll all the way from Vayikra to Bamidbar, that's a long way, and the whole of the community is standing around waiting. And it's not uh, the expression used in the Talmud. It's kavod hatzibur. It's not honourable to the public to make them stand around and wait. And neither option, neither rolling on nor bringing another sefer seems to be acceptable. So in this case, he reads it off by heart. Kore alpeh, he reads off by heart. And then he makes a bracha. Um leha shmuna brachot. And he reads, after the, afterwards, he makes eight brachot. Ahatura, the Gemara explains, this is just the regular um, bracha we make on Torah reading. It might be um, it might be um, it's one of the two brachot for the Torah. That's Ritzay from Shmonis, right? from the Amida. On the Thanksgiving, that's the bracha of Modim from the Shmonis, right? That's the special blessing for Yom Kippur, the Al Hamikdash Bifneats more, and he makes a bracha for the temple, the Al Yisrael and on Israel Bifneats Mam, the Al Yerushalayim Bifneats Mam, and on Jerusalem on its own, the Al Kohanim Bifneats Mam, and he makes a bracha for the Kohanim, the Al Shar Hatfila, and then he recites the rest of the Tefila, and. Don't do this now, but if you go to the source sheet and you count these brachot, you'll see that there are not eight brachot, there are nine brachot. There seems to be one extra bracha in the printed text. And sure enough, the bracha for Jerusalem, Al Yerushalayim, is actually not there in the Kaufman manuscript and it's not there in the Gemara. So somehow we've got a little, maybe we got mixed up between eight and nine. And in one version of the Gemara that I've seen, the bracha for Israel is not there. So maybe, maybe there are two versions. Maybe there are two versions of this Mishnah, one with for Israel and one with for Jerusalem. And somehow the printed text we have incorporates both and the number of eight goes up to nine. And the Rambam comments here. Hakriya haitab ezrat hanashim. 
the reading was actually in the woman's court. And it's very interesting here. We see the same thing with Ezra. When Ezra comes back to Jerusalem from Barvel, he finds a demoralized a, a, a community which is really degraded and demoralized. And he reads from the Torah in the middle of the town square in Jerusalem. And the book of uh, Nehemiah records there that he reads to men, women, and children. And it's very interesting that the Rambam comments here, the reading was in the women's court. In other words, it was in a place in the temple where everybody could hear men, women, and children. How does he prove this? Because the, um, a, a person is allowed to sit down there, to sit down in the women's court. Kiamru or med. And the text says he stood and read. And the fact that he said that he stood is proof that he was sitting until then. And um, he was allowed to sit in the women's court. And then the, the Rambam goes on to say, In all of the other parts of the temple, no one was allowed to sit no one was nobody was allowed to sit only the kings of the house of Israel so this this Torah reading here seems to be a it seems to echo the reading of Ezra perhaps it echoes the reading of Hakel perhaps it re echoes the reading that we do today in Shul um in which at least according to the Magen Avraham and other opinions women are included as as well as men and then the Rambam finishes, um, The Mishnah says he finishes with the rest of the tefillah, and the Rambam is more specific. He finishes with the bracha of Baruch Atah Hashem, Shomea Tefillah, who hears prayer. And, of course, this is especially important on Yom Kippur, and it's interesting that the Rambam brings this on the, um, let's say, in the middle of the temple service of Yom Kippur. And here we can see uh, if you like, the synagogue and the temple meeting. And, and of course, at the end of the seventh chapter, as we move into the eighth chapter of Yoma, we'll see the um, we'll see the temple service um, pass away and we'll come into um, Yom Kippur as it's dealt with in the synagogue today. Someone who sees the high priest when he reads doesn't see the bull and the goat that are being burned. We learned in yesterday's Mishnah that the bull and the goat are taken to be burnt outside Jerusalem. So you can't see both simultaneously. And the Mishnah continues. Someone who sees the bull and the goat which are being burnt can't see the Kohen Gadol reading. Not that it's forbidden to go from one to the other. It's not forbidden to break off, if you like, participating in one mitzvah, to go and participate in a different mitzvah. It's not forbidden. But it was, a, it was far away. And the work of both was like one. They were both happening simultaneously. So you couldn't possibly make both events. But you were permitted in principle to break off from one mitzvah to participate in another mitzvah. And then the Mishnah continues, and we're going to rush here because we're out of time. If he read in the garments of linen, in other words, if he read in the holy linen garments, then he'd have to sanctify his hands and his feet and strip off his clothes and go down, immerse himself and come up and dry himself. And the assumption is that if he's reading in his own clothes, he would already have carried out these. And then they bring him the golden clothes. Have you little big days of They bring him the golden clothes. He bree, he bree, he, we've seen this before. He puts on the golden clothes. He sanctifies his hands and feet again. And then he can go on with the temple service. Be outside, be outside. At a law that ail um, he go, he's going to go and sacrifice his ram and the ram of the peoples. Um, and the et shivak kvasim smi mimbenei shana. These are all mentioned, by the way, in the parsha of Pinchas, which he's just read. 
Divrei Rabbi Eliezer, according to Rabbi Eliezer. And Rabbi Akiva has a slightly different time table. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Im Tamid Shal Shahar Hayuk Rebim. Rabbi Akiva says these were actually offered up with a morning Tamid. And he has a Pasuk to prove this. Ufar ha ola vesair ha nase bechutz hayuk revim im tamid shel bein harabayim. And the um, bull for the for the whole offering and the goat which was offered up, offered up outside. This is the goat that's offered up not in the Holy of Holies, but on the outside altar. They are offered up with the evening tamid.